and welcome back uh, from Mission Story. So, Mission Story is about telling people about Jesus in various ways. Mm -hmm. um, tell me something missiony that's coming up for our area here yes, in Maryland. In Maryland and Tridelphia, we are having an evangelistic meeting. Um, we have entitled it Prophecies of Hope. And I think hope is something our world is really looking for. When you hear the news, when you hear all the things that are happening around us, we are truly seeking hope. And so, yes, we will be doing this November 4, all the way up to December 3. Wow. Okay. Yes. Maybe we'll get some snow in there sometime. <laughs> yes. Um, so, just a note on that. Uh, if you are in a different state, mm -hmm. uh, feel free to join us here. We're going right. to try and post these. I don't think it will be the same day, but um, we'll, you'll just look out for the live updates because uh, as we progress through the evangelistic series, somehow we're going to upload. That's right. And so if you're in Florida, if you are in Hawaii, if you are in Nicaragua, mm -hmm. if you are in Greece, feel free to join us. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're finding this like two years from the posted date, it'll all be in our library there organized and ready for you to watch the whole series. Just do a whole marathon through. Uh, but um, here we go. Uh, new lesson. Yes. Pastor just kind of showed the cover. I'm going to throw the cover again here on the screen. But this one is Future Hope. Hope. But that's the, the bold print, right? Yes. So the first part is on death, dying, and the future hope. Yeah, I like how it's like really small. Yes. On death and dying. It, we don't like to deal with some of that stuff. But mm -hmm. um, anyway, before we get into this lesson, uh, let us pray. So mm -hmm. bow your heads with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for a new quarter. We thank you for the mission that is happening around the world. Yes, and Lord. We ask that you would continue to help us as we try to reach people around the world uh, with the love of Jesus mm -hmm. and message of mercy. Now as we dive into the lesson about future hope, we ask that you would send your spirit to be with us, uh, be with those on the other side of the screen as well, mm -hmm. and help us as we try to understand what you have in your word in jesus name amen amen okay so in a summary of yeah how would you summarize this so death dying and future hope how would you summarize this next quarter so this next quarter i would summarize it um in first pointing to the origin of sin and death and suffering in our world but not just leaving us to that um reality that we experience here on earth but telling us of the hope of the future hope in Jesus and so I would summarize it in in both um, present reality um, future hope <laughs> okay so this week's lesson specifically is called rebellion in a perfect yes. universe we're gonna link the lesson mm -hmm. here and the YouTube chat, so if you want to follow up, you can. But could you read uh, Isaiah 14, verse 12? This is this week's memory text. Yes. How you have fallen from heaven, you star of the morning, sun of the dawn. You have been cut down to the earth, you who defeated the nations. Okay, so this is kind of an interesting poetic yes, piece. Yes, it is. So, we're talking about something so perfect that we have a hard time imagining it. Mm -hmm. But somehow there's this mar, there's this rebellion. So, this verse here is about who? It's about Satan. Okay. So, yes. at, at some point, Satan went by the name of... of Lucifer. Okay, and what does Lucifer mean? It's it's connected to light. Okay. Light bearer. Okay. Um, Which is really cool. Yes. Light is an amazing thing. It's an amazing Carrying thing. Carrying the light, that's yes. a good metaphor. Yes. 
but we have this um, crazy thing happen. So there's a lot of people throughout time that have kind of, I think, explored this concept of where evil came from. Yes. So there's novels about it. There's Myths. Myths, like through different mythologies yes. around the world. Um, like the whole Pandora box concept. Yes. Where you open it and then out flies all the evils. So, in contrast, we have the Bible here. Yes. So, for instance, well, we can look here. So, if you look at like First Chronicles 29. Yes. Uh, it, Verse 10 and 11. Yeah, it says, Therefore David blessed the Lord before all the assembly and David said blessed are you Lord God of Israel our father forever and ever yours O Lord is the greatness the power and the glory the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and earth is yours yours is the kingdom O Lord and you are exalted head over all so what does this verse tell us about God he's all-powerful okay and he is above every living being in the entire universe so i think the question is how did this happen to an all-powerful god how did sin start in heaven and how did it continue here upon earth you know you look at the mm -hmm. text in matthew 5 48 it says therefore you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. is perfect so we have all powerful all perfect ruler over everything all perfect uh -huh. and then if we go back to the new old testament here deuteronomy 32 verse 4 it says he is the rock his work is perfect for all his ways are justice a god of truth and without injustice righteous and upright is he so all powerful perfect and just and this perfect justice yes and when I look at the world and I see all this injustice mm. I can take comfort in the fact that someday justice will be served correct you know <laughs> there's this sometimes I like watching uh, on YouTube crash compilations of vehicles okay. it's kind of like to me it's like once you get this plethora of information you kind of get a vibe for how people drive mm. when something happens. So if a truck gotcha. pulls out, typically people end up going this way or that way. So I, I just find fascinating. And then there's also a similar compilation called the Instant Justice Compilation. Oh. So it's the person with the, you know, Dodge Challenger that goes roaring by and waving his fist out the window and then he cuts in front and then the police comes out of nowhere and pulls him <laughs> over and you're like yeah so it kind of gives that whenever we see justice served it kind of does something in us but then there's a lot of things in this imperfect world we don't see that conclusion correct and so it, it's something that we have to work through but um and maybe in fact most often we don't see that conclusion and that's frustrating. And that is frustrating, where you see people taking advantage of little people and making their lives miserable and everyone else's life miserable. And they're, they seem to be doing well. And see, that's why I think people like watching Instant Justice compilations, because it's like they get to see good overcome evil. Evil, yes. And uh, people like to see that in film. Mm -hmm. They like that in the conclusion of their, their books. They read the, these novels or these stories about how things were terrible or people's biographies where it came from, from here and went to this. And so there's that heartwarming however it is. But let's, let's go back to the beginning, like okay. three chapters into the Bible. Let's turn to Genesis uh, chapter three. three and let us do. So basically there's this concept that everything was created, mm -hmm. but there was also this concept of evil already. Mm -hmm. So Genesis one, uh, three, one to five. Yes, I would be glad to read it. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, 
we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Okay, so apparently there's good and evil, and this is like right at the beginning. So I guess that means we have to go back further. That's right. <laughs> to figure out what that what is. What happened here? Okay, so hmm, let me see here. Do you, you, you've, you've heard that kind of um, parable of the wheat and the tares. Mm -hmm. And the servant comes and asks the field owner, and they're like, uh, this, you can follow along in Matthew 13, 27. Mm -hmm. uh, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Then why are there all these tares, tares. or weeds? And the owner replies in verse 28, an, an enemy, enemy has, has done, done this. this. So God has created the perfect universe, but we have some enemy defiling it with mysterious seeds of sin. Mm -hmm. So can we turn over to 1 John 4, 8? Mm -hmm. Actually, you read 4, 16. I'm going to read 1 John 4, 8. Okay. So 1 John 4, verse 8 says, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Mm. What does verse 16 say? And verse 16 says, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Okay, so... That is kind of a foundation verse. Foundation verse. So that we can be reminded that everything about God is love. And, and I think the, the lesson also points out that love must be expressed. Hmm, okay. It's not something you can keep to yourself. It's not something you have, but you don't use. It's something that in order for it to... Um, to, to be recognized, it must be manifested, it must be shown. And, and God does this through His creation. In fact, I believe that we will be having a creation Sabbath very soon. Hmm. This month of October. October. Yes. Yeah, we'll put the date here mm -hmm. and some more info so That's you can right. uh, follow up on mm -hmm. that. But the purpose of Creation Sabbath is to have that time just to remind you. Mm -hmm. um, we live in this created world constantly, but there's a lot of times that we forget about it or we just take everything for granted. I'm looking at all these beautiful, beautiful trees, trees and realizing how mm -hmm. all of this could be gone in a moment That's if right. we had the wrong kind of storm, like what happened this past week or or um, in certain parts of the country, or if there was a fire coming through here. Or a drought. Or a drought. You know, everything is so connected mm -hmm. in the natural world. Um, and Creation Sabbath is there to celebrate that. So. Yes. And, <laughs> check, and like you just it mentioned, it, it, it just tells us again, uh, I don't come out here to water these trees. <laughs> yeah. But there's a God who takes care of the trees, who takes care of the birds, who takes care of deer who takes care of every living creature on earth and he expresses his love in in many ways through through his creation desire of ages mm -hmm. in uh, the 762 page 762 says God's love has been expressed in his justice no less than in his mercy mm. justice is the foundation of his throne and the fruit of his love mm. so if you look around at the created world i'm i'm seeing a squirrel you're not seeing the squirrel <laughs> but the squirrel is actually has a black walnut or something oh, and he's going nice. to but it, it's it's winter soon so it he's he, he knows 
Uh, but if you look around in the creative world, what kind of things do you see as a reflection of God's love? And that's something to meditate on this afternoon. That's right. Um, maybe go for a walk. That's right. You know, maybe you have a lake near you. Maybe mm-hmm. you have some walking paths. Um, just go find something and where you can see that. And then, in contrast, um, you can also see the things that have been ravaged. You know, the rose garden, there's going to be the thorns. Mm-hmm. I hear fantastic this week, there's been some, um, some work here in the woods and there were some trees that were leaning the wrong direction right. and they were about, they were old and dead and they mm-hmm. got chopped down this week. And you know, there's that kind of sadness that it was a grand tree and it lived so many years, but there's also, as it de- some of it decomposes, you see the little bugs that Start it's working just like, away. It's just this, this, this life cycle that just keeps going and it's, it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. So how can you learn to draw lessons Mm -hmm. of hope from the expression of God's love revealed in creation? Again, creation Mm -hmm. Sabbath, check it out. (laughs) Uh, Let us look um, now. So we we looked at a couple of those verses, but now Mm -hmm. let's look at in 1 John Mm -hmm. uh, 4, 17 uh, or 7 through 16. I'm going to read the odd verses, 1 okay. John 4, starting verse 7, and then you can read the even verses. It says, mm-hmm. Beloved, let us love one another, for God is of love, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Mm -hmm. So you can read the rest of this, but what is some of this to you? So basically it's telling me that this God of love created us to love him and to love one another. And we don't, usually think of our mission on earth as being one of loving others but it seems like that's God's mission for this earth and he constantly is trying to tell you and me how much he loves us through his creation through other human beings and especially through his son Jesus okay so this Mm -hmm. brings us back to okay I see Mm -hmm. that pastor but what about this evil aspect yes why is there evil in this world and there is this concept in the Bible and and uh, one that we I think cherish and hold on to and this is why life makes sense okay and that is free will well but that's tough too it's tough (laughs) because it's that tough. means everyone has free will and people can do, they can do what they want. They can do what they want. There are consequences. We all know that. So because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. Because <laughs> it can get you into big trouble. But you still have the ability to choose. You're not a robot. You're not a machine. You are a human being with this beautiful gift that God has given us to choose and going back to the story Mm -hmm. there was choice in heaven there was so Satan having seen all the glory of God having seen all his perfection and all his justice it's a mystery he rebelled He chose to rebel and chose to basically tell God, I don't need you. I can figure this out on my own. In fact, it's not just me, but there are several others who will follow me and we see this sad consequence of sin. So what I'm hearing is God did not ordain sin to exist. Correct but he's allowing the existence. Correct. 
And, and that's already difficult for many of us yeah. to understand. Why would a perfect God, a just God, allow so much imperfection and so much injustice to occur? And we trust that God in His mercy is still working even when we can't see Him. And one day I think He will explain many things that we probably have asked ourselves why. And why he, did this have to happen? And He takes upon Himself the ultimate punishment as he well. He does. That's what's incredible. It's not like just like, well, just be patient. Uh, uh, we'll have you'll, a solution coming. You will have a solution coming, but He is the solution and He actually steps into this world and goes through suffering like no one else has ever gone. No one has gone through the type of suffering and pain and hurt and disappointment and discouragement and, and even violence as Jesus went through. So free will, it's a powerful gift, mm -hmm. um, but it comes with consequences. It comes with depending consequences. Depending on how you... Correct. You choose. <laughs> yeah. Um... So it's, it's something that we have to, it's something that I have to think, okay. Something that you have to think. I have hmm, to think. All right. Is this what I need to be doing right now? Thinking right now? Saying right now? Listening right now? So we're constantly making these choices. But in our painful musings about evil, the lesson says, we must never forget that God himself paid the highest price mm -hmm. for the existence of sin and evil. That's right. And I think, I don't know if, if this has happened to you, but sometimes when I'm going through a difficult time, and I'm thinking, why God, why? And then I open the Bible, or just some of the stories come to mind. I go, wow, I'm not going through anything like Job, or Peter, or Paul when they were imprisoned, or when they were killed. So I was like, well, yeah, I'm going through some stuff, but nothing like others have gone in the past. So it, their, their example and their faith, you know, encourage me. So let's go to this uh, section in Ezekiel. Okay. If we turn in our Bibles to Ezekiel 28. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this time I'm going to read the even verses. Okay. We're going to go through verse 19. Okay. It says, Son of man... This is Ezekiel 28, verse 12. Son of man, take up lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You are the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading you became filled with violence within and you sin therefore i cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of god and i destroyed you O covering cherub from the midst of the fiery stones your heart was lifted up because of your beauty you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor i cast you to the ground i laid you before kings that they might gaze at you you defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities by the iniquity of your trading, therefore I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you, mm. and I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the people are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. So this feels like a future quote. Correct. Because this literally takes the whole history. Correct. From the thousands beginning. Thousands and thousands of years. All the way to this so, very end. Or, I mean, we don't know the time before. Correct. We don't really know when Lucifer is. It could have been millions of years. We don't know. But here mm -hmm. we have Lucifer, this beautiful, beautiful covering cherub. And then 
there's that downfall aspect, but then mm. there's that also eternal consequence mm -hmm. and burning up ashes never no to be more. correct so i don't know <laughs> with this it's like it's in the middle of ezekiel and you have this thing about lucifer mm -hmm. how how did that how did that come to be that's a, that's a great question and and i think what God is trying to do is show us this um, concept of this great controversy that okay. started at the beginning of our creation will end sometime in the future. But basically he's telling Ezekiel, we're in the middle still of this great conflict, this great controversy. And in the context of Ezekiel, he was seeing that God would destroy the city of Jerusalem, mm. the temple. And he was worried for those who were there in Jerusalem, the people of God had apostatized, turned their back on God, sinned, were worshiping idols. And I think God is again manifesting the source of all this evil. Is, is coming from Lucifer, this angel, this beautiful angel who rebelled. It was like the most perfect type of angel. Yes. So many different colors, yes. so many beautiful things. Beautiful with, voice. <laughs> yeah, you have this whole amazing, like, description. A, yes. anything an angel could ask for, and yes. then he becomes dissatisfied. Hmm. And... God had created and honored him, mm -hmm. yet he loses this thankfulness and this... He wants more recognition. He More recognition. And he just take, grabs onto something, I guess, today we would call power. Yes. It, it's a power grab. Mm -hmm. um, there was an interesting quote here in the lesson. It says, Sin is a mysterious, unexplainable thing. There is no reason for its existence. To seek to explain it is to seek to give a reason for it. And that would be to justify it. Sin appeared in a perfect universe, a thing that was shown to be inexcusable. inexcusable. Hmm. So it's like you have everything perfect and then you have this. Imperfection. Imperfection. And, and, and downright, um, you could say, cruelty and... and and like you said, you know, almost like a, a power grab here where hostages are taken now and everything. Did you notice there was kind of an element of pride as well? Yes. And that kind of transitions us into Wednesday's lesson as yes. well. Yes. And, and, and pride is a dangerous, dangerous element that, that um, is, is, is a, it, the results are disastrous. Be it at home, we can experience that, or at church, or at or work. work yeah. um, once pride kicks in, um, we become very self-centered versus other-centered. And so now we're to the part of the lesson that, you know, covers that aspect mm -hmm. of Isaiah 14. Mm -hmm. You know, remember that was the memory text? Yes. And how you are fallen... From heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. Verse 13, moving on. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mm. mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Mm. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Mm. So, what far-reaching consequences did Lucifer's pride while in heaven bring to the universe and to this world? Something we'll be studying, death. Yeah. That is a bad consequence. For the wages of sin is death. death. And I think this lesson kind of alludes to the concept of Babylon. So, mm -hmm. in the Bible, the city of Babylon, it stands for... 
a power in direct opposition to God mm -hmm. and his kingdom. And why would you say that is? Like, let's build some foundation for the viewers here. So Babylon is known for its many gods, and okay. especially Bel was one of the gods that r supposedly ruled the city of Babylon. Um, these Babylonian kings, you know, were also, they thought of themselves as gods. So you take the story like Nebuchadnezzar, for Correct. instance. Correct. Um, in fact, there's a the chapter in the Bible written by Nebuchadnezzar where That's it's his right. personal testimony once he had gone through that whole uh, crazy situation. Anyway, yes. <laughs> <laughs> read up about it there. Uh, but y you remember how he has the vision of the image? Yes. And he takes that concept and reworks it just a little bit. So he has that, uh, let's just make everything gold. Let's make it all me. Correct. Um, but... So, Babylon, just, just keep that in, in mind. I, I know I think we've alluded to that aspect in, uh, in other lessons, but when it comes to prophecy and different aspects, you know, there's Babylon and there's Egypt, and both of them kind of are at odds with the people of God. And, and Babylon is probably known also as one of the nations that, that basically did a lot of harm to God's people. So they came to Jerusalem. They destroyed the city of Jerusalem. They destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. Um, God had warned the inhabitants of Judah, you know, a force from the north is coming to destroy, but there's still time to repent. If you, if you just, you know, turn and, and amend your ways, um, you, you won't have to, you know, leave this country. You will dwell in it, but you have to repent. And sadly, they didn't pay any attention. But I think also the Babylonians, as well as the Medes and the Persians and the Greeks and later on Rome, they went far beyond what God had intended them to do. And they really showed their might and their power in a very cruel way instead of in a very benevolent way and in a very... Um, just way. They, they actually made a lot of innocent people suffer and, and die. So did you notice how they tied this in and why they tied it into this section of the lesson, that whole concept of Babylon? It, so, it's kind of this, this yes. king of Tyre. Can yes. you want to explain that? Sure. So, so he's, he's, he appears here in, in our text of Isaiah chapter 14. And it's also in referencing to that from this last lesson, Ezekiel 28 as well. Ezekiel 28 as well. So you have um, this king of Tyre who, who is also one of God's enemies. Um, it's a, it, it, it fights against God's people. And, and, they, and it represents again, once again, Satan and, and his desire for um, power over anything that belongs to God. So, why is it so easy to become proud and boastful? Mm. Um, we can be talking about either <laughs> positions um, or achievements or both. And how does keeping the cross before us prevent Venice from falling into that Amen. trap? Amen. Amen. So, I think I, I heard once someone say that. Um, Success is probably something more dangerous than not achieving it. Mm. And I think for many who do achieve maybe position or power or influence, um, they might think somehow they either deserve it or they think that their intelligence or their strength help them achieve this on their own. When in fact, I mean, I learned to read because of a, a lady by the name of Mrs. Liskey and Miss Kaiser at Ruth Murdoch Elementary School. Hmm. This is my kindergarten teacher. This Bering was my Springs, Bering Michigan. Springs, Michigan, first grade teacher. And, and these were two amazing ladies who taught me to read in English and, and opened up an incredible world of books and knowledge that otherwise I would have probably not known about. So, so we actually stand on the shoulders of, you know, great people, and, and many of them unrecognized. 
So any achievements that we have is, is maybe thanks first to God and then to our parents and, and other people who um, were able to influence us and, and, and show the, us, build us and up. build us up. That's right. Just, you know, we don't have a whole lot of time okay. left here, but on Thursday's lesson, we kind of... Do you, is that is okay to move on now? Yes. All right. I just want to yes, make sure yes, yes, if there yes, was anything good. else. No, no, on no. That. Good, good. But Revelation 12. Mm -hmm. um, what is this chapter uh, teaching us about the spread of the rebellion in heaven to the earth? Yes. So, so it te teaches us first that it started in heaven. Okay. So many might think that you know it all started on earth. The Bible is clear. It started in heaven. And there was a great battle between Satan, Lucifer, the old serpent, the dragon, and Michael. Okay, so verse 7 says, And war broke out in heaven. Yes. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Correct. So when it says that, I mean, that's basically you're kicked out. You're kicked out. And they came to Earth, and they probably had the opportunity of going to other places. Other places said, no thank you, we don't believe you. Human beings sadly said, oh really? That's interesting. Let me try. Boom. And, and then that's back to um, Genesis, Genesis 3. 3. Correct. And that's how it all began here on Earth. We disobeyed. We trusted our senses more than we trusted God and His Word. Uh, but, so, just back to here. Yes. Verse 9, it says, So the great dragon was cast out, that old uh, serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice, this is verse 10, saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren, who is accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And can you read verse 11? Of chapter 12? Uh, chapter 12, verse 11. Okay, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you that dwell with them. Yes. Um, what is that comfort for you? Wow, that's amazing. Amazing that, that we have someone who stands on our side and his name is Jesus Christ. We are not in this battle alone. He has fought and won it in heaven. Amen. He has fought and won it on earth and he can win it in each one of our lives if we allow him to live in us. Uh, there's a great book mm -hmm. um, that we like to reference for various aspects. It's called The Great Controversy. Yes. Um, and page 495, 496, there's this quote here. It says, God in his great mercy bore long with Lucifer. He was not immediately degraded from his exalted station when he first indulged the spirit of discontent, nor even when he began to present his false claims before the loyal angels. Long was he retained in heaven again and again he was offered pardon on condition of repentance and submission mm. you know it's interesting because like it seems like in every conflict that we see um there's various ways people deal with it Correct. sometimes everything they just get shut down and there's no questions asked and then other times there's like this long drawn out process where you can start seeing parties um this this side of a party and that side of a party and then there's the conflict and if you if you look at some of these longer conflicts here in the world i can't imagine how long that must have been in heaven it must have felt like an eternity up there <laughs> yeah and just like the the day by day little micro changes mm -hmm. and the attitudes and his convincing of other angels to join yes, his side yes. mm -hmm. um it's it's pretty insane to think about but back to the whole battle aspect here what are ways in which we can see the reality of this battle hmm. being played out on the earth 
and why is our only hope to overcome our enemy in this battle? Uh, I think the, the, the text there in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, put it quite clearly. Um, it's because of the blood of the Lamb. That, that mm. is what gives us hope in, in this situation. It's like um, we're dying and we need a blood transfusion and Jesus offering us that blood saying, Here, you, you will live. Trust me. Just let me take care of you. And, and in regards to conflict, I think we all see it. Um, we see it in, at the workplace. We see it um, among friends. We see it also in the news. It's, it's, it's there. It doesn't disappear. People there, just... There's always this concept of mm -hmm. good and evil. And while we're on this planet, we're always going to be struggling with this, this fight. The fight between good and evil. And um, it's up to us each and every day to figure out how to navigate life. It's just the simple things we've talked about in the past, in past lessons, surrendering our wills every Amen. day, um, accepting that gift of salvation Amen. every day. Because what I do today doesn't cover me for tomorrow. It's every day individually. Desire of Ages says, From the beginning, God in Christ knew the apostasy of Satan and of the fall of man through the deceptive power of the apostate. God did not ordain that sin should exist, but he foresaw its existence and made provision to meet the terrible emergency. So great was his love for the world that he covenanted to give his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Can you pray for us as we Let's close? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for that amazing gift, the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who promises to be with us and to help us with whatever situation we might be facing at this very moment. We thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus. And we pray in a special way for all those who are going through very difficult times, be it health-wise, be it financially, be it um, relationships, and just pray that you will Oh, help them overcome any of these obstacles. And we thank you for hearing our prayers, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Join us next week as we hit the next lesson in this new series of this new quarter. Take care and happy Sabbath. Hello, friends. Today, we're concluding our video series on the 28 fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I hope you've been blessed by these brief studies of each of our Bible-based beliefs. If you would like to watch any of these messages again or share them with a friend, you will find them all on the Seventh-day Adventist Church's YouTube channel at the URL shown at the bottom of the screen. Our 28th fundamental belief is a very exciting one. It's all about the new earth, a world that will be perfect completely without sin. It will be a world filled with joy and happiness, a place where there will never again be any pain or suffering. In our previous message about the millennium and the end of sin, we talked about how sin and sinners will be destroyed by fire, and the earth will be completely cleansed. In the book of Revelation, chapter 21, we read how the Apostle John saw the new Jerusalem come down and settle on the earth. He then writes, beginning in verse 3, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. 
What an amazing place. Imagine what it will be like when the whole earth will be restored in such a way that everything is perfect and beautiful. A place where we will live in the presence of God Himself forever. We will be able to eat the fruit from the tree of life and drink from the river of life. And because of God's bright glory, there will be no night there. We will live forever with our precious loved ones who died in the Lord and were resurrected. These are just some of the amazing things we can look forward to in the new earth. In speaking of this wonderful place, our 28th fundamental belief describes it like this. On the new earth, in which righteousness dwells, God will provide an eternal home for the redeemed and a perfect environment for everlasting life, love, joy, and learning in His presence. For here God Himself will dwell with His people, and suffering and death will have passed away. The great controversy will be ended, and sin will be no more. All things, animate and inanimate, will declare that God is love, and He shall reign forever. Amen. If you would like to learn more about what the Bible says on this topic, I encourage you to visit the URL at the bottom of the screen. In the new earth, we will have an eternity to learn and grow and discover new things. We will be able to talk with Adam and Eve, Joseph, Daniel, Ruth, Mary, the apostles, and many more Bible heroes. And best of all, we will be with Jesus forever. All sin, pain, and suffering will be gone. No more hate, only love. No more unbelief, just worship and peace. No more sin, only salvation and safety. It will be a whole planet full of promise and possibility without any pain. In the final chapter of the wonderful book, the Great Controversy, the inspired author writes, All the treasures of the universe will be open to the study of God's redeemed. Unfettered by mortality, they wing their tireless flight to worlds afar, worlds that thrilled with sorrow at the spectacle of human woe and rang with songs of gladness at the tidings of a ransomed soul. With unutterable delight, the children of earth enter into the joy and the wisdom of unfallen beings. They share the treasures of knowledge and understanding gained through ages upon ages in contemplation of God's handiwork. With undimmed vision, they gaze upon the glory of creation, suns and stars and systems, all in their appointed order circling the throne of deity. Upon all things, from the least to the greatest, the Creator's name is written, and in all are the riches of His power displayed. She continues, And the years of eternity as they roll will bring richer and still more glorious revelations of God and of Christ. As knowledge is progressive, so will love, reverence, and happiness increase. The more men learn of God, the greater will be their admiration of His character. As Jesus open, opens before them the riches of redemption and the amazing achievements in the great controversy with Satan, the hearts of the ransomed thrill with more fervent devotion, and with more rapturous joy they sweep the harps of gold. And ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands of voices unite to swell the mighty chorus of praise. Friend, I want to be there to join in that mighty chorus of praise, don't you? You can be. God longs to give each one of us the gift of salvation and eternity. Have you given your heart to Him? If not, there is no better time to do just that than right now. And if you have, 
why not recommit yourself to him just now as we pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for the amazing culmination of the great controversy which brings righteousness and Christ to the forefront, that we, along with all those who will be saved through the grace and the blood of Christ and what he is doing for us in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary right now in interceding for us, will come together in such a rapturous and wonderful event where we will be together forever throughout eternity. Lord, we submit ourselves to you right now. We ask that you will control our hearts so that we and many others will join in that great, wonderful culmination when we rise into the sky and be with Christ forever. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.